guys um i hope you're good and great um so uh we will uh so we saw a lot of stuff uh so i, I just want to resume what we saw earlier in the previous part that you can still uh be able to watch on the replay of youtube so we saw what is guerrilla we saw what is assembly we thought together our first steps and uh, we introduce a concept of uh, override, uh, which is a really powerful concept. And uh, we also uh, talked about shading and lighting. And it's going to be the last part of my uh, of my uh, introduction of Gary. It's going to be the rendering part. So that's the uh, the whole stuff that we saw, and we are going to see this final uh, part today. So let's go directly to the uh, rendering part. Okay. Okay, perfect. Hello. Um, okay, thank you so much. I saw really, really uh, uh, nice uh, comment on the uh, on the live feed. So thank you so much. Um, okay. Um, that's the case today. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to finally use it and you got all the other part that you can uh, see on the YouTube page. Um, okay, perfect. So um, today we're gonna talk about the uh, running part, which is the uh, final part that we uh, want to see how to go uh, A to Z into Gary without going to uh, deep uh, into the software so I'm, I'm gonna try to uh, do something uh, about a uh, fan or I don't want to go too uh, too long today it's gonna keep pretty uh, simple so um, this part is gonna be about rendering um, I'm gonna go directly to uh, to Garia uh, really fastly okay perfect let's start a new instance of Garia really quickly nice and um, I'm gonna switch to the uh, depth of field uh, sample that you can uh, load directly uh, with the menu of samples, depth of field. And I'm gonna trig uh, a render. Okay, and that's it. So we're gonna play with it. Um, most of the stuff I will do uh, today uh, are gonna uh, work with, uh, I I'm gonna uh, be focused on this. Uh, Element. So uh, this element is render pass and is gonna store all my settings. So um, you got two ways to get access to the uh, to this node to this render pass. Uh, first of all, you can access directly with the uh, node list, and uh, otherwise you can you can go directly to the uh, passes uh, um, uh, tab that you can get right there. And uh, I'm gonna select the render pass directly right there. Perfect, and we're gonna dive into the setting right there okay perfect so this is the settings of my scene uh so gary is um is a, a pass tracer uh it can be also a, a bidirectional pass tracer um if you're interested in that uh, please visit another video I've made uh, about the uh, bidirectional pass tracing and uh, UD inertial pass tracing. Uh, I explain everything, you can see how it works. But in this case, we're gonna be simple and we're gonna stay and stick to the first case. We're gonna work with the uh, unidirectional pass tracer. Um, so, um, Gary, I try to be uh, a really simple, uh, really, really simple uh, tool to use about the settings that are really, really simple. So I'm gonna um, have a look about these uh, three sliders and we're gonna talk a little bit about this one, but the three sliders. Um, I also made a video that uh, it's on the uh, official Gary Render uh, channel. You can see about the adaptive sampling, so and I'm not gonna dive too much into the technique about that. But I'm gonna uh, 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 synthesize this really simply. Um, so uh, what is samples, adaptive threshold, and adaptive mean samples? What does this mean? It means that uh, this is maximum sample I'm, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna allow Guerrilla to a budget to render, this is a minimal sample I'm gonna ask for a render my image, and this is gonna be the threshold that's gonna switch, uh, that's gonna balance between these two settings. It's more complex than that, so please have a look at my video. But and the first approximation is going to be uh, way enough for us to have a look. So if I want to go for something really draft, 
this is the kind of setting I'm gonna search it with. I'm gonna stick to the sample of uh, to the sample of uh, 0.5. Uh, it's gonna give me something super draft, super noisy. So I'm gonna store the image right there. Okay, perfect. So this is 0 0.5. And as you can see, if I've got for 0 0.5, so I'm gonna divide by 10. Uh, my render is gonna be longer, of course, uh, because I'm gonna send more simple, uh, more and more samples. But as you can see, it's gonna be less noisy. So first thing to understand it, uh, it's a question of noise, it's just a question of how many samples. Um, this is one of the strengths of the pass tracer. It's, it's the same image, it is a two cases with the same amount of light, with the same information. It's just a question about the, uh, how, simple, how much sample that you send. So um, that's something that's really, really powerful with the concept of pass tracer. The images are equally the same except for just question of sampling. So that's the only difference. So please, one of my first advice about rendering, don't render with the final settings if you don't need to. Please, please, please be sober into your sampling. Okay, so um, sampling is just a question about which threshold I wanna uh, work with. Um, for testing purpose, you can work with uh, a threshold of zero, which is gonna mean that it's gonna be the samples max. So this uh, value, which is gonna drive the uh, uh, amount of samples. So this is maybe the case that you saw um, uh, earlier in other renderer. Uh, Gary right now is working in adaptative. So um, I'm gonna keep working with, uh, with these uh, settings. Okay, sometimes, uh, most, most cases in production, are, are, I wanna go mad, so maybe you're gonna see uh, a settings that's gonna be a super powerful number right there because that's the same thing I need uh, into uh, my production settings. So, simply, maximum, minimum, uh, threshold is gonna drive between the uh, quantity of notes you wanna get, the lower you get, the longer it's gonna be to render. So if you go for something super, super uh, tiny like this one, it's gonna take a long time. Okay, as you can see, Gary is gonna estimate that it's gonna be something around a minute to render this case. And you will see that it's gonna be less, more and more simple, that's gonna be sense, or it's gonna be less and less noise renders. Okay. Um, yeah, um, max and min sample are per pixel, that's the way of the adaptive work, it works per pixel, I detail that into my uh, video about the, uh, about the uh, rendering, yeah, yeah true. Uh, so have a look into that if you want to uh, be more, uh, um, if you want to get more information about the adaptive sampling. So let's say, just a question about the, uh, for, for, further uh, for this tutorial, we're gonna see that. Just a question about the, uh, what is the level that we uh, use in the adaptive test threshold, and you can see that's practically the same image, it's just a question about the, uh, about the sample I use, the uh, threshold I use. Okay, perfect. So what I can uh, set into this from the past, I can set the size, but uh, in most of the case, it's gonna be the same uh, user uh, settings, the same uh, size as the user project. So I'm gonna back to the user project that we don't saw that much earlier and I'm gonna have a look at the project settings. So project settings can drive the project settings of your scene but it can drive also the render pass. Maybe I do not agree with that so maybe I want to divide by two my image. Um, okay so I can use slash two uh, to uh, undermine it and as you can see it's gonna divide by two my uh, uh, size of the size of my image. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to my user uh, use project settings. Okay. Um, secondly, uh, I can use uh, different f uh, format to export the images, but I'm not gonna talk about that right now. Uh, I'm gonna render in my image and I'm gonna go directly to what is in, uh, interesting me the most in this case is gonna be sampling. And I've got a slide for that. Um, so sampling uh, is going to be um, how you can work with, how you can drive uh, a precisely how uh, work the renderer. So uh, most of the case is going to be how to set your bounces. Uh, it can be also understand as the depth of the uh, of the tracing. So bounces, uh, what is bounces? Uh, 
I use a really simple um, setup like this one, really simple, and I change the, uh, I increase the amount of bounces. What you can see, it's the amount of ray that you uh, send to the render that have been sent to the free surface to trace the GI. In a case where I don't have any bounces of reflection, I will have no reflection. Uh, between the two surfaces, but when I uh, increase my number of bones, I can see one reflection bones, and if I'm increasing by the uh, limit of gear right, right now, it's going to be 32 bounces, I can see something that's going to be close to the infinite. Um, I say close because we are infinite world, so as you can see, even with 32 bounces, I still got a tiny black part right there. But 30 bounces, really, really, really a lot of uh, of bounces already. For uh, most in case in production, we're not gonna use that. So um, let's switch back to our scene with uh, right there, and um, I'm gonna uh, decrease my uh, number of uh, bounces. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna get uh, one bounce of diffuse. Okay, I don't have any sparkle bonds and I will have no refraction refraction bonds. Okay, so uh, as you can see, I don't have that much uh, uh, GI, and that's what will drive the GI. So I'll save these images, and we're gonna increase by something like by five or okay, let's go by eight. And as you can see, it changed the uh, color bleed. Not that much, but it changed a little bit the color bleed I get into my image. Sorry. Okay, perfect. So it changed a little bit the color of bleed I get into my con into my uh, intersection in my contact. Okay, interesting. So I'm gonna increase also my specular bounces. Let's say that I'm gonna increase by one. And as you can see, it uh, increased my number of bones able to do so. Right now the uh, light is bouncing. Uh, through my surface and it's uh, using reflection bonds to uh, uh, reflect into the sphere but it's not enough for this case because I've got another reflection bonds is needed for getting my black part there so I'm gonna increase it until I've got the uh, reflection perfect okay that's the case right now as you can see I've got one bonds for my diffuse, one bonds for my reflection surface, one bonds for my sphere right there, and you work and you go directly through the camera. Perfect. So how I can understand that is question of um, always trace bonds. Um, so I didn't try it recently because it was broken, but I hope it worked well. well uh, okay, perfect. So what I use, I select one region. So maybe I didn't explain to you what is the, uh, uh, how we can use the, um, the uh, render region. Render region in is very really simple, just to uh, press shift, uh, right click and trace something like a square or rectangle and you can render it to this view and it's gonna run render region some part so if you wanna go fast and say okay uh, what this setting is gonna give me with this zone okay I can render this region really quickly so I don't have to render the whole image um, we got a really powerful uh, tool which is the render debug pass um, I can say okay uh, what is this pixel? Wh wh where is from? Uh, and I'm gonna render it. And what Gira is doing? It's gonna trace from the camera to the pixel all the connection that you get. And as you can understand, uh, Gary is sending samples to the sphere, is gonna bounce into the sphere, bounce, bounce into there, get any reflection from the surface of the diffuse, and try to connect with something like, let's say, this surface. So you can easily understand uh, where every bounce, where every pixel is coming from, and what bounce do you have. And it can be interesting to change the bounces, but, uh, and have a look at uh, how we distribute uh, differently uh, the samples, but I'm not gonna dive too much into this part. So you can understand easily that you can uh, have a view of debugging uh, where the render right there with this uh, super powerful tool. Um, I'm gonna switch it off by just removing the light pass uh, that it create. It's just a stack of uh, many uh, um, a line that are uh, into this group, so you just have to I just have to remove that. Okay, perfect. So that's um, how I can drive. Uh, I'll work my reflection.
But in Gira 2, uh, we introduce a new uh, feature with the Russian roulette. Um, I've got, I'm not going to go too far also with the Russian roulette. Just understand that uh, you give the power of Gira to uh, adaptively kill or not some bounces. So most of the time, I'm going to work with something like that, saying that I've got maximum boss of 8, and I'm going to say that Gira can use 8 of uh each one if you need to. So if I've got a pure reflection, it can go by eight, but most of the time Gera is not gonna use them. Just the ability of be able to use that just a limit, but uh, most of the time with the Russian red is gonna stop that. It's like a Russian logic game, it's killing some stuff. So um, please use your Russian red most of the time. Uh, it's not said by default by one for many uh, legacy reason, but uh, right now, if you are a new user of Gary, I don't have any legacy on it, please uh, set one uh, into the Russian where it will work perfectly. Um, we got uh, also something that uh, a lot of users are interested in too. Uh, say, uh, so if you got the money of uh, Elimination McGuff, never go below six bounces. But most of the time, uh, when you're a student user, you need maybe to be below than six bounces. So it depends. Uh, but uh, yeah, but that's a, if you got the money of uh, what Christoph uh, got in production. Yeah, sure. Never go below six. Um, so uh, there is also things that uh, uh, can be um, useful for many users that are coming from uh, other uh, render it's a light cutoff. Uh, it can be understood as a light light threshold maybe, and uh, it, you can use that. But in Gera we don't use that. We don't wanna uh, bias the renderer. Uh, but you can use that to bias the renderer and save time. Uh, it's say that it's a minimum of light uh, to be accum accumulated for light. So it can be really useful if you got many light and wanna spend less time in rendering. Okay, um, there is a caustic by default. Uh, it's running a uh, sharp caustic. If you want to go for a uh, more complex caustic, caustic, sorry, uh, please change that for all caustic. But I'm gonna stick for the uh, sharp caustic. It's gonna be uh, more than enough for uh, our case. And um, we got the image sampling also, which is gonna drive uh, if I got motion blur or not. In my case, I don't have motion blur, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna show you how to uh, switch on and off the default field. I'm gonna switch off the default field and. Voila, you got no default field at all if you like real like CG. So uh, please use the default field. It's going to be uh, uh, beautiful, if I can say. It's going to be beautiful with it. Um, you can uh, you can play with the uh, bucket. You got many settings right there. You can introduce some bitmap to uh, get a custom one. Uh, if you follow the, uh, maybe on the Discord, on the forum, I don't know. Uh, Christoph asked some questions about the bucket. And uh, there are some uh, tips. And you can use um, a non uh, uniform color bokeh. You can use an RGB bokeh, and it's gonna give you an impression of uh, of uh, color of um, uh, lens uh, aberration of uh, chromatic aberration. Sorry, uh, I'm losing my English. Uh, so you can play with the uh, side, with the angle, with myth of uh, fun. It's super fun to use. Okay. Um, the recent part about the motion blur, so motion blur is drove by the camera. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, talk that much about the motion blur, so you need to uh, spend time something. I, I would love to do a tutorial about uh, uh, how to export uh, uh, cleanly uh, in a clean way from uh, maybe Maya or uh, Blender data and uh, put them into Garia with right motion blur. Um, just understand that the uh, amount of motion blur is gonna drop by the interval of that. The bigger the interval is between open and close, the bigger is gonna be the motion blur. But there is many more dependencies in that, so just a simple approximation of this case. Um, Okay, uh, I'm gonna talk later about the denoising, it's gonna be simple. I'm gonna talk later about the file. I'm gonna go directly to the part that you love, guys layering. So, I don't wanna layer into this scene, I wanna play with this scene. So, I uh, reopen my uh, robot and I'm gonna just extract some part. Okay, perfect. So, let's say, let's render. I don't have nothing. Perfect. So, I prepare messy maybe a little too much. Okay, so it should look like this. 
So this is an asset, uh, and uh, most of the time when I'm rendering objects, uh, uh, the compositing department is asking me for uh, separate some elements. Uh, most of the case is going to be the uh, background, the foreground, and many other stuff. Um, I've got a scene which is, I forgot the time where uh, that are already open, maybe we have seen, uh, I've looked at the production scene, but uh, for this case I'm gonna stick it to something really simple. Uh, so um, what I do right now, it's uh, every object is gonna tr go through uh, and be rendered into uh, one beauty, uh, which is into a group which is called layer. So what does it mean? Um, in Geria, we got an IF key and a hierarchy of elements, uh, which is a render pass. It's an evocation of the render engine. We got a layer, which is the uh, interception of the buffer. So this is gonna drive which object, which object is uh, able to see into this group of not. And we got AOVs, which is an RGB image, uh, which is beauty and contribution from to the beauty or any technical pass. So understand that one render pass uh, it's needed, one layer is needed, one of it's needed. Uh, if you don't have one of them, one of each, it's not gonna work. Uh, this is my case right now. I've got one render the pass, one layer and one beauty. My layer is called layer, my render pass is called a render pass and my beauty uh, AOV is gonna be called beauty. Uh, super simple. Um, what does it mean right now in my scene? If I select an object, you can see that every object I'm selecting is gonna go through the flow, is gonna be intercepted by this layer. So simply, uh, we can understand that uh, uh, every object who is gonna go through this layer node is gonna be uh, output by the uh, layer buffer and gonna be able to see into the layer buffer. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I'm gonna call that arm Okay, I'm gonna drag and drop this layer. I'm gonna connect it right there. I'm gonna pick one shape and connect it to the visible input of my layer. So right now I've got one layer which is arm. It's producing one beauty, uh, which is beauty also. And uh, right now in my buffer, I can be able to switch to the layer or to the arm beauty. I can see any render, of course, because I didn't press render already. So I'm gonna uh, press render, and as you can see, render my arm. So in this case, I've got everything, and in this layer, I've got simply only the beauty of my arm. There is nothing more simple to in to Geria. Uh, is there is nothing more simple uh, to understand? Uh, it just questioned up. If, if the object is going through this node or not, is gonna draw which object is gonna be visible into the layer or not. It's super, super simple. Um, if you remember what we saw earlier with the uh, uh, pass node, I can simply create a Lua pattern or regular expression, and I'm gonna call every object with containing the arm uh, word into his name and that's how I can be able to render the whole arm of my project simply. Most of the time uh, I want to do something else uh, I don't want to see uh, the arm into my rendering. I've got two ways of doing that. First of all uh, the simplest way is to say okay uh, Every object is gonna go through my layer, but in this case, I'm gonna override the setting of my arms and say that my arm are gonna be removed with a minus layer of my layer. And in this case, it just removed. Simply add that. So in this case, everything except the layer, and in this case, only the layer, and I can recompose everything together. Um, there is another way, uh, so in this case I just removed it, I'm just using a mat, so it just question like if it was hidden at the process of rendering. But um, primary visible, it, it can, it, it's more precise, I just remove the primary visibility of the object into my render. But in this case, I'm gonna, I want to create something else, I'm going to use the mat input. What does it mean? Mat input is going to create an old um, into the mat of my object and it's gonna remove what information I've got B 
behind the object. In this case, it's not really interesting, but uh, you can easily understand that if you got um, a mix between objects that going uh, uh, in foreground and background, then you want to be sure that uh, they are going to be removed and there is an all, and you can compose that with a merge. You're going to need that to uh, use as a mat and doing an all into the object. Um, I hope I can uh, show you that in a couple of, uh, of seconds. Um, if you want to create another AOV, uh, it's going to be super simple. Um, you just have to uh, create uh, a plus and have to switch that. So I'm going to go right there, color is create a plus, and I say I just want to, I'm going to extract all this picture of my image, just simple as that. So as you can see, only my uh, arm. Uh, layer is gonna get my uh, specular. Okay, reorganize the uh, my layer. That's that's why I understand it. It removed that, and as you can see, I've got my beauty, but I've got only the specularity of my uh, render. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit uh, into my rendering. Perfect. Okay, right there. So I've got my beauty. I've got my everything beauty except I matte. I've blocked my render and I can get only the specularity of my rendering. Perfect. So that's how you can create uh, AOV in your area. It's really simple. Just has to add uh, in this uh, layer system elements. You can add uh, AOVs, you can add layer, you can add. Uh, I'm not going to talk about adding a render, um, a render path. It's going to be more complex than that. And there is not going to need it into the first part of that. So let's switch to my. Uh, big image that's something i render uh earlier in this morning to prepare my render so um in this case the uh, students of uh of uh, mice project um create our lighting scene so i change some samples i can give you this can give you an idea of my sampling i just add for uh 4, samples max a threshold of uh, zero zero that point uh, zero that three, uh, a lot of um, of uh, time I heard uh, Jean Michel talking about the settings. Uh, this is the same setting I'm using as is using. Uh, most of the time is going to be uh, zero dot five for draft, zero dot one for preview, and is going to be uh, zero dot uh, that zero three. Uh, for my final render, it depends of uh, which it's if it's a VFX project of uh, an animation project, depends of a couple of stuff, but it's going to be around this uh, kind of threshold uh, to uh, render it. Okay, so uh, in this case, I've got an, an animation. Uh, this project uh, start at the uh, frame 100, ending at the frame 250. Uh, you can j j have to enter some number to uh, drive the uh, length of your uh, scene and the time. And um, I'm going to show you really quickly. Uh, so I'm going to go back to uh, less samples. Let's stick to something super simple. I just want to show you uh, the uh, final image. Um, it's not exactly the same render as it did because I tweaked some reason with some new stuff of Garia and I change uh, the uh, uh, color profiles um, of the uh, of the scene. Uh, okay, but please have a look at the uh, of their student project. It's my it's uh, my so small story. It's a project from Isar Digital. It's a really really wonderful project, and I'm really glad that they are uh, we're willing to uh, 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 spare with me their scene to work with and, and show you their wonderful work. So. Um, Creating some uh, background and foreground render can be really simple into that, but uh, I just want to stick to the uh, settings right there. Um, okay, uh, so I, I just want to stick with this thing. So uh, most of the time, uh, what I uh, encourage you to uh, use, it's uh, uh, use the um, uh, XR uh, render. Uh, you can uh, render PNG of T for any shitty format that you can imagine with, but that's not the that's not really a good workflow for working. So, uh, what is my rules for working? Well, it's uh, EXR file all the time, 16 bytes, uh, 16 bits, sorry, uh, for the color AOV, so beauty, specularity, uh, albedo is going to be 16, and uh, if you got a technical AOV, which is going to be a Z-pass or a normal pass, uh, you have to render it with a 32-bit uh, float, sorry, 
that's the beauty of uh, of working with uh, Google Drive. I can edit it really quickly. So uh, working with a 32-bit float, um, it's it's a need for the uh, composing department. It's a question of to work well with Google or not. That's that's production that you can use that you need to use right now. Um, what I will show you with this scene, it's how uh, I can how I can render. So right now I can render my image. So that's that's a pretty big scene. Um, Okay, well, it, it worked really fast. Uh, it, it restarts really fast. Okay, perfect. So that's a production scene. It render with all the elements. There is a lot of furs. It will instantiate object. That's that's a real scene. So uh, I, I want to show you a real scene. It's not going to be fast. It's going to be uh, it's going to be long to render. But I just want to show you that really quickly, you guys. So um, well, uh, first of all, I can render in local, which means it's going to only render into my render view, but uh, I can trigger uh, other settings. I can render with batch. Render with batch is really simple. You just have to uh, tick batch right there and um, set which uh, frames you want to render. So uh, right now, I want to render the 100 and uh, the uh, 112 and the... 250 that's gonna be that um, I'm gonna batch render so uh, if I just wanna uh, 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 trigger batch render I just have to go to batch and trigger the render uh, Gary is gonna save the scene to be sure that it's rendering the right scene at the right time and he's gonna open a terminal and render as a batch into the background so uh, first of all you need to load the whole uh, project uh, as this project is gonna be big it's gonna take time to render so you can understand that so um, uh, also um, up okay you can understand that it's uh, uh, loading my uh, RAM and taking time for loading that uh, so that's why it's gonna take long for processing that so first of all uh, by the way it's gonna baking my procedurals in my settings so that's, some, that's something uh, if you ask uh, have question about the uh, how working with a uh, rendering uh, fear please uh, have a visit into the discord and uh, we'll answer that okay so that's how I can set up my scene if I want to set a range I can go to 100 to to 70 it's going to be my final images I can reorganize that with many ways uh, there is documentation about that so I can have a precise frame I can go for something with a range I can do a tons of stuff and um, uh, the final stuff I want to uh, show you it's uh, the denoising of the image. I know a lot of people are, are enjoying this uh, feature recently, so we introduced the um, uh, and, um, Intel uh, denoiser. Um, it's really simple to use. You need uh, three elements for using it. Uh, first of all, uh, you need to set the pixel theater with triangle FES or any FIS uh, renderer, but most of the time I wanna, uh, you're going to need the triangle FIS, it's going to give you the best result. You need to set the uh, denoising and denoiser to the Intel Open Image Denoise, it will work right away. As you can see we got uh, uh, the uh, BCD denoiser, which is a simple denoiser, but not gonna work really well. It's not as precise as the Intel one. And uh, if you were using Inobright Altus, you can connect it. Uh, we got the output directly, and you have to uh, uh, simply install it, and uh, it worked really well with uh, Gary right now. And I need to add uh, a couple of maps. Uh, so I've got the beauty. I'm gonna need to add the albedo and I'm gonna need to add my normal So normal cam right there. Okay, so beauty albedo uh, And cam I just have to have a look to be sure that my beauty is gonna be the noise of uh, My albedo is not gonna be the noise because it's not gonna be needed and my uh, end cam is not gonna be the noise because it's a technical pass as you can see Gabriel has already set to uh, override some settings into my normal camera. Uh, by default, it's going to be 16, but most of the time I want to switch it to 732 because that's what need my um, department. And I'm going to render the image, and as you can see, it's going to give you I up a re quick render and denoised. So, by the way, it's going to be uh, render in a couple of uh, seconds or minutes please uh, 
if you got some question I can uh, answer it really quickly by the uh, couple of minutes that we got in front of us Oh, I was big. <laughs> Sorry, that's why it takes so much time. I'm gonna divide that. I got full HD, so for uh, for uh, uh, an example, I'm gonna go for something divide by two. It's gonna be more than enough to, to render it. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, if you got a question, shoot. So in the waiting time, I'm gonna sing a little song or not? Depends. Okay. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I, I divide by two the uh, uh, width and eight of my uh, of my images in divide by four as you render in time. So also that's my, one of my advice for today, you guys. It's gonna be the question of uh, how you can uh, <laughs> how uh, uh, you can uh, divide the rendering time. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I, I did a really, really draft uh, images. Uh, the noise is going to be really uh, downgrade, that makes sense. But most of the other part is going to be uh, really perfectly denoised. And that's one of the stuff you want to do for uh, getting a really uh, fast uh, image that we can use in preview. Just have a question of, uh, of uh, these uh, three uh, quickly passes that you can add albedo and cam, keep it with the beauty. And uh, FES right there and Intel Denos right there. Okay. Uh, last but not least, uh, my images are gonna be rendered uh, by default into a folder, which this folder is gonna be um, an images folder if you don't touch anything. So I'm gonna dive into my uh, projects a lot. The film. Okay, right there, here it is, Garia, Garia scene, and I've got an, an images. Hmm, where it is? Maybe I'm wrong, it's not the right settings. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, it's gonna be rendered in whip. So you can see that's, uh, that's a pass uh, where my images are gonna be rendered, and as you can see, this is my render, this is all the render I made. And um, I don't know why I've got two ones. Okay, ah, that's a different frame. Perfect. And uh, here is my render. I just render. Okay, that's it. This is my render from my uh, uh, directly from my folder. I can compare it uh, with my uh, previous uh, images that I rendered uh, this morning and I compared that it's just a question of playing with uh, A and B so you can connect directly A and B right there and you can compare them really quickly with that okay that's all for today uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, tutorial with giving you uh, uh, the uh, basics uh, how to render your image how to set your samples how to your export your uh, images which which uh, you format most of the case I want to render it with uh, OpenSR ID. I'm going to set all, uh, keep it uh, by default. I'm not going to say anything. It's going to be rendered into my uh, folder. You just have to follow the path of your folder and you're going to find it. And uh, if you want to render batch, just have to uh, uh, check batch and give uh, the right uh, range of frame. It's going to render it into the background. I have a little for question, no question, perfect, have a good day guys.